The youngest person in the United States ever put to death by the electric chair was an African-American 14-year-old boy named George Stinney Jr. George Stinney Jr. lived in the mill town of Alkaloo in South Carolina, where whites and blacks were separated by railroad tracks. Stinney's family lived in company housing until they were forced to move after his father, George Sr., was fired from the local lumber mill when his son was accused of bludgeoning two white girls to death. According to court documents on March 24, 1944, Betty June Benneker, age 11, and Mary Emma Thames, age 7, were riding their bicycles in the black part of Alkaloo looking for flowers. When they saw Stinney and his younger sister outside on their property, they stopped and asked if they knew where to find Maypops, a local term for passion flowers. This was the last time the girls were seen alive. Benneker and Thames, who were white, never made it home that day. Their disappearance prompted hundreds of Alkaloo residents, including Stinney's father, to come together and search for the missing girls. It wasn't until the next morning where their bodies were discovered in a water-filled ditch with their skulls smashed in. At 2.30 p.m. that day, the town medical examiner performed an autopsy on both girls and determined their causes of death to be blunt force trauma. He concluded that Benneker and Thames had been struck multiple times in the head with an object with a quote-unquote small round head about the size of a hammer. When Clarendon County law enforcement officers learned from a witness that Benneker and Thames were last seen talking to Stinney, they went to his home. George Stinney and his older brother Johnny were arrested on suspicion of murdering the girls. Johnny was released by police, but George was held and interrogated for hours in a locked room with no witnesses or attorney. He was not allowed to see his parents until after his trial and conviction. According to police accounts, Stinney confessed to murdering Benneker and Thames. A month after the murders, Stinney's trial began at a Clarendon County courtroom where a white court-appointed defense attorney, Charles Plowden, did little to defend his client. The jury took 10 minutes to deliberate, after which they returned with a guilty verdict. The most significant piece of evidence presented against Stinney was his alleged confession, but there was no written record of the teen admitting to the murders. On June 16, 1944, Stinney walked into the execution chamber at the South Carolina State Penitentiary in Columbia with a Bible under his arm. He was led to the adult-sized electric chair where he was strapped in. A mask that was too big for him was placed over his face. When officials turned on the switch, 2,400 volts surged through Stinney's body, causing the mask to slip off. His eyes were wide and teary, and saliva was emanating from his mouth for all the witnesses in the room to see. After two more jolts of electricity, it was over. Stinney was pronounced dead at 7.30 p.m. Four minutes after the execution began, and 83 days after the murders. George Stinney's first-degree murder conviction was appealed in 2014. His siblings claimed that his confession was coerced and that he had an alibi. He was with his sister at the time of the murders. They also noted that a man named Wilford Johnny Hunter, who claimed to be Stinney's cellmate at the Sumter County Jail, said that Stinney denied murdering Benneker and Thames. On December 17, 2014, Judge Carmen T. Mullen overturned Stinney's first-degree conviction, stating that his sentencing was cruel and unusual punishment. She wrote that there was a violation of the defendant's procedural due process rights that tainted his prosecution. Seventy years too late, George Stinney Jr. was exonerated. This is the story of George Stinney Jr.